Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 4th of June 2024. Uh, around the virtual table, uh, we have myself, Demain Duportel, Hervé Lemer, Mark White, Stéphane Merle, Bruno and Kevin are not there, either busy or too early for their time zone, and Jay. Hello everyone. Uh, let's get started with the announcement. So, I wasn't able to check the new weekly release status. Um, let's see. Uh, up, up, up. Did someone see something happen with the with that release today, the weekly release? Looks I haven't. Like... I haven't checked yet. I, I'll check after the meeting. I don't think there's anything we need to take time on in this meeting for it. Agreed. So. Um... Uh, the release process started oh, still okay. in the in the started. prepared prepare release step progress this meeting being two hours earlier will yep no need uh, to spend no more time it's working as expected for now and we will carefully watch it um so announcement i will rewrite new weekly uh, meeting time today let's try it so it's theoretically 10 p.m utc right no no 12 o'clock p.m utc yeah you have the right value that you typed you typed okay. well and it said wrong yes okay sorry 12 so it's noon utc <laughs> correct <laughs> I always have doubt with noun, is it PM or AM? I think my brain will never be wired. To, uh... That's funny. I, I have the exact same problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so let's... Yep, sorry, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, noon is great. Okay. So looks good for everyone. We lose Kevin and Bruno in the process. Um, as we discussed last time, we could also try alternating, alternating two different times. So we'll see, we have different solution. Uh, my message here is if that time is not suiting you very well, please raise your voice. That's not a problem at all. We can find solutions, okay? Do you have other announcements, folks? Nope, okay, let's have a look at the calendar. So Next week will be 11th of June, we will have a weekly meeting and a weekly, that should be 2.462, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what do we have? We have an LTS that will happen next week. The release candidate was released last week, if I'm correct. Uh, correct, yes. Cool. Uh, about Jenkins security advisories, I don't remember seeing one. Let's check all together. Uh, no, we don't have a new one. Last one is from uh, two weeks ago now. So none. Good news. Uh, let's have a look So to the upcoming credential expirations. Um, Stefan, uh, from last week, we have um, created the issues. We have one expiration, the eighth for trusted CI uh, Azure credential, the ability for trusted controller to spin up agent on Azure virtual machines. Stefan is taking care of this one. And we have 10 of June DigitalOcean personal access token that we use to access DigitalOcean API for, so not for Kubernetes management anymore, but for Terraform management, archive Jenkins IO machine mainly. Uh, we have an issue that will be scheduled to the new one. Do you have, do we have something else on the upcoming three weeks? I'm opening my personal calendar on the other screen. Let's all check together the Jenkins Infra team calendar. Okay, I'm moving it to the screen, the shared screen. Okay. So this week we have nothing. No, what I want is this one. Perfect. So we have the Saturday trusted, so Stefan will uh, tell you more about the timing. Digital Ocean Monday, so both have an issue. Yeah. The other one is the 30th of the month, so we got time. Okay. 
Those are your perfect. Sorry. Okay, the last one. So we don't have no, uh, we don't have new ones. No new expiration for the upcoming three weeks. Current have issues in milestone. See below. Perfect. Uh, next major event. I don't remember. Do we have major events? We do. Coming? The CD Mini Summit. True that. CD. Uh, coordinated by Olivier Vallon uh, at uh, in Vienna, Austria, uh, in September. Vienna, Austria, September two thousand twenty four. Right. Cool. So Olivier is a former is my predecessor and is a former uh, Jenkins contributor. Okay. Bru cool. Bruno Bruno Verachten is also planning to attend that. Bruno will be there. Yes. Cool. Right. You're scared to write his last name. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and I know him since years. It's a, that, that, that <laughs> says something. Okay. So let's have a look all together on the current cloud consumption. So don't, uh, so as a reminder, last week was, um, uh, was on both May and June months. So the amounts, the current consumption are still low and the forecasts are not trustable for now because it's just three or four days of, of consumption. So it's hard to forecast two, three days over a full month. In details, on the Azure account that we use paid by the CDF, where our goal is to try to have an average of 5K per month over the year for this year. We target 4.3, just to be ambitious, uh, just to be sure we have a margin. Part of that margin has already been consumed in January, as a reminder. But if we stay at, at 4.3K per month until the end of year, we will be just OK. Um, so last month, we closed the month at a, a live consumption reported of 4.2, adding the 100 monthly support. We are at 4.3 and a few bucks. So we are we are under the lines. That's good job, everyone. Um, we are working on decreasing a bit this for the month of June, but yeah, we'll see. Um, right now, we have a forecast at 3.8. It's a linear forecast. Don't trust it. We should be under the 4.3K and maybe better if we are able to terminate the infra CI agent cluster migration to the sponsored account. Any question on Azure CDF account? Nope. Mark, do you want me to send the mail to Mitchell just to confirm that we are uh, uh, on the target for last month? Just to, uh, she will see news from us. Is that okay? That would be great. Thanks. Okay. Yes. I'm taking care of this then. Um, the Azure sponsored account. As a reminder, we have credits that will expire end of August 2024. Um, we have consumed almost 5K on May. So good job. That means uh, the bomb builds uh, is running and consuming credits. We have 25K credits left until end of month of August. Right now, we have consumed 500 uh, forecast at 4 to 5K. Um, I haven't checked if we consume 5K per month. Yeah, June, July, August. Yeah, we will make a big hit yeah. on that uh, credit. So... We will have still some left. Exactly. No worries. <laughs> we are working on consuming more. <laughs> um, is there any question about this one? Nope. OK. Uh, Digital Ocean. So what we saw is that we decreased the consumption because we removed the cluster. And right now, the consumption is, <laughs> I would say, low table. <laughs> So we should be under $300. Uh, $300. So that means 
we have an opportunity if we want to add resources on digital ocean or keep these resources for later the year. That's our first source of margin. Just a quick note, the credits we have on Digital Ocean by default expired 2nd January 2025, which means we will have to contact them in December in order to see if they want to renew the sponsorship for the next year. Any question? Nope, okay. A word on AWS. So the cloud, the sponsored account is untouched. We will use it starting in August. Until then, uh, on the Clubbiz account, we saw a visible decrease of almost 1K last month, like for DigitalOcean. And right now, we have consumed 704K. Uh, AWS forecast says 7.9, but that's completely broken. If you do a linear consumption from this one, you are we are closer to 5 to 6K for the upcoming month. So let's say if we're able to consume less, less than 6K, then that will be a great achievement. So that's all for the cloud budget. Do you have questions, things you want to clarify to add? Cool. Okay, let's continue like we are doing. We are really in good shape, uh, financially speaking, until the end of year. So good, let's continue like this. Okay, let's have a look at the tasks that we were able to finish during this milestone. Um, first of all, we had the, the usual uh, account, account uh, issues that we closed either because we did an action like this one. So the developer uh, did uh, duplicated uh, issues and they were mixing their account on issues Jenkins IO and the local Jenkins. We helped them, but we never had an answer in the end and they wanted to have a call with us. <laughs> so yeah, usual. Um, I don't know what to do except closing and giving information if they're not able to read. I mean, yeah. Uh, we had the removal of a spam account. Thanks Mark for taking care of that. Uh, Maven 3.9.7 is now generally available uh, on all our platform. Uh, a mail has been sent to the developers. The sponsorship program has been renewed for one year with Docker. Uh, they have, we received uh, two or three weeks ago an automated email. I filled the form as explained in the issue and everything is renewed. So we continue benefic benefiting from that sponsor. The main, um, the main thing is no API rate limit for the users of the Jenkins slash Jenkins image. You can download it without being covered by the API rate limit. That's not protecting anyone from the abuse system at Docker Hub if you try to download too much. We have been targeted by the system recently. So now we know the difference between API rate limit and abuse system. Any question so far? Uh, we were able to fix the Docker packaging issue. Uh, that one has been pretty tricky. I will have a call with Vincent Latombe tomorrow just to understand. It looks like that the Kubernetes plugin when uh, inheriting pod templates on the pipelines uh, doesn't do a deep merge with the YAML structure while it does correctly when using Groovy definition. So we went full Groovy. So the pipeline is now defining a pod template that inherit from the existing one that we define because we have some system tolerations and specific setup, but we don't want to lock the developers or maintainers of the packaging job because that one is pretty specific, especially the Ansible part. So we inherit from the existing and it only overrides an environment variable and the Docker image. Long-term, we could dream of having all the Docker packaging image inside the all-in-one image, as Stefan suggested, but the amount of dependencies is really high. So right now, that will be a nice trade-off so we can all continue our tasks and we don't block the, uh, the packaging team when we will change again the clusters during the year. Is there any question on this one? Okay, so thanks uh, Mark for raising it and thanks Tim and Basil for taking care of merging and helping me. 
Another issue closed, we helped uh, Carlos Rodriguez. He gave his talk last week in Sevilla. That was a CNCF talk about Jenkins uh, cloud friendly. I mean, no one needs to be cloud native, but being cloud friend is way better, easier, let's say. And he used the CI Jenkins IO history and current setup uh, in order to demonstrate that a lot of uh, cloud native projects can work along with Jenkins. So he was uh, really eager to show the ability before our sponsorship ran away to schedule agent on Digital Ocean, Azure, and AWS. That's a configuration he showed based on screenshots and code samples I gave him. So thanks, Carlos, for this awesome work to advocate for Jenkins. And thanks, everyone, for helping him. Finally, last issue, not an actionable for the Jenkins infra team. Um, there were something related to the Nexus Jenkins plugin that uh, so some cleanup were required because it was bundling proprietary dependency. As a reminder, that's against the rules for us hosting plugins on plugins Jenkins IO. So everything has been covered. Uh, usually they propose their own distribution channel instead of our ours. So it's just moving on their own system and that's all. Or they could uh, open the proprietary dependency depends. In that case, they move on their own system as far as I understand. We had a few issues that closed as not planned. So usual Jenkins login issues, second recovery. So yeah, um, thanks again to the University of Aachen because they are so prompt to help people on our own help desk when they are blocked. That's really cool. I really hope that adding a mirror in East Europe will help them having less suffering from this kind of blockers because that's quite the maintenance, but thanks for helping us on that part. Um, and then we had two issues, uh, people not sure. They didn't use community Jenkins IO to ask their own question, so close without action from us. So far, is there any question, things to add on the closed issues? Sound good to me, thank you. Cool. So now let's have a look at the work in progress and then we will look at the new issues after. Um, most prior, most important task for today is the update center. Stefan, do you want to summarize or should I do for this one since we both worked on it? I, I'd i rather have you explaining it, but if you yep. feel that you need a, uh, a break in your speech, no I can. Okay. No, no, no problem. You have uh, enough things to, to tell us <laughs> for That's me fine. to have a break. Um, so the status is... Uh, we, the work in progress is on the update center. Um, we are testing the new uh, published script. So that script is responsible on triggering the generation of the update center every five minutes, then copying the resulting uh, newly released plugin on the mirrors and copying to the updates.jenkins.io's update center, the, the new indexes. Um, since we are adding a new update center system with mirrors, we have extended that script a few months ago to copy on Azure and uh, Cloudflare R2. Right now, since we are working on adding, a, we, have, we have added the second Cloudflare bucket, we have two second Azure file storages due to us splitting services recently. So we have multiple targets. We have five targets right now to copy and even more if we are able to use OSU OSL virtual machine, that will be seven targets from a single source. And we are working on a new uh, structure for that script. It doesn't change its behavior but that abstract away and use feature flags. That's a combination of brainstorming with Hervé and Stefan on that topic. We want to be able, by using a few environment variable, to selectively test some part of the script without risking breaking the production. So right now we are on the testing phase. The code should be okay, except any review or feedbacks or errors. That involved a lot of hidden work regarding the credential generation. The idea is that we want to 
uh, centralize the credentials used for desynchronization, whether it's AirSync with an SSH key or parameterizing uh, Azure file storage with AZ copy or using AWS S3 command to copy to Cloudflare Air2 buckets. So uh, we have worked, the three of us, uh, out recently on having a way to automatically generate that credential. And we are testing that new zip credential with one environment file per destination. So the early tests are promising. Right now, we are toying with a real life freestyle job on Trusted CI. And the next step will be uh, harassing a bit Daniel Beck for getting his review or deciding we can merge and test and assume the consequences or rollback. So just a reminder, it's just the publication part. It's not the generation part. This one, we would never merge without a GenSec uh, advice. Is there any question here? Okay, Stefan, did I miss something on what we did? I, since last I would have today? had that the, the choice to, to extract the environment uh, files allow us to, um, to be able to use, um, um, sorry, a, a staging environment if we want to, to try also new or uh, part absolutely great. So it's, it's both taking out and simplif simplifying and, and handling in the um, in a better way the credentials and all the the variables that need it for the five different uh, uh, copy but also to be able an uh, an an easy way to be able to uh, uh, target somewhere else as a as a staging environment absolutely so, so we easier exactly. iteration next time that will allow us way more uh, possibility to mock on one way or the other production. So creating a st ephemeral staging, persistent staging, um, using a local directories we have, that allows a lot of scenarios in the future so we can update and go a bit with more trust on what we change on that critical system in the future. I don't Thanks know for the, the English version of uh, On fait d'une pierre deux coups. We that's kill exactly one that. bird with two stones. Oh yeah. That's the, that's the, the expression you want Thank to Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the precision, Stefan. Is there it's, any question? Two yeah. birds, one stone. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, it's it, because I'm, it, I'm bad it, at it's throwing bad. Things, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, or you can but, try with co, but it's harder. It's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fair. Two birds, one stone. Yes. You have the right to mock me for on this one. That's that was that one. was very good. I like that. Two stones, <laughs> one bird. That's that just says I'm a bad shot. Yes. <laughs> There is only bad thrower on and right. only good catchers, right? Exactly. Okay, next uh, priority topic. Uh, so, Stefan, uh, renewal of the trusted CI as your credential. Yes, this one is planned for tomorrow. Um, I took advantage of the of the need to uh, renew the the credential to uh, work on an update CLI to automate uh, a little. The, the renewal that doesn't do anything that's semi-automatic because it's just generating the new credential we still have to uh, copy and paste it uh, in the correct uh, um, trusted CI uh, controller UI but uh, at least we 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 have two ways not to forget one in the calendar and one in the in the pull request. Perfect. So that's already a nice improvement because we have a pull request, which is way more easier to work on as a team. Um, I also add, in the spirit of the last changes like this one, you were able to document in using the pull request, what are the steps? Yeah. So the pull request opens with documentation, which is really useful. Um, so need to rotate the credential uh, to perform. Uh, do you have decided of a date and time? Yes, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I I don't remember if I said so in the in the element infra. Okay. But it's planned for tomorrow morning in my head at least. Morning. I need yeah. I need to make yeah. sure that I I communicate on that. Okay. Um. So thanks. Additionally, uh, we um, will yeah, see it, a new issue from the... team. Sorry. Sorry. I did I did communicate. It's written. 
in the okay. infra Jenkins infra channel. Let's see Justin Jenkins infra. See message. Okay, if you can get the link of the message and add it later yes. on the notes, that will be perfect. Just a note, as per uh, team uh, issue, we could envision using um, uh, stop having um, a credential and use manage identity instead for that specific case. Using Azure manage identity. As a reminder, a managed identity in any cloud is a way to avoid providing um, avoid providing a, a credential. Instead, the requests are authenticated through a trusted system related to the virtual machine behind or the container behind. So the identity is the technical account on which we can apply the, the, the permissions. Today, we already defined this one for trusted. We have a service principle, which is allowed to create virtual machines, only what is required in order to spin up agent and delete them. So the idea is that we don't want to manage an application password that we have to rotate every three months for this one. And instead, we rely on the virtual machine that would have the identity assigned and trusted by the Azure cloud. That mechanism has um, good Good advantage is it's a trade-off because you don't have to store the password even if it's encrypted. So you protect yourself because it's rotated every hour and you don't need to rotate it yourself. So less maintenance work. On the other hand, that kind of mechanism is weakening the security if you are using a multi-tenant system. So in the case of trusted CI, that's perfect because if you have access to trusted, you have access to it. That's all. We don't expect it to be multi-tenant, so that's perfect. Third CI or release CI will be the same pattern. But on the other hand, I wouldn't use this one for CI Jenkins IO because that means anyone able to run an arbitrary command from the controller would have the credential without requiring authentication. So yes, if you have access to the controller on CI Jenkins IO, you can eventually find a flow and decrypt the password that is used today. But I personally would prefer on a multi-tenant scenario, relying on a password and the control access to that password inside the system. Because if it fails, then it means you have a flow on Jenkins that need to be fixed. It's visible. That's a trade-off. Um, so for trusted CI, that will be a good idea for later. Uh, I'm not sure how to plan it, but now we have an issue to track this proposal. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's much that effort at first sight, technically speaking, but we might have surprises. So we need to anticipate a bit of margin regarding permissions. As a reminder, both the credential rotation or moving to manage identity will not break trusted CI or only partially. The update center is safe because it uses a permanent agent, so no need to create machines in Azure. The processes that could be broken, though, will be a repository permission updater that runs every three hours, Javadoc and Jenkins IO deployment. These will be the jobs at risk. So it's only partial failure if we fail the permissions. Is there any other question, things to add on that topic question? Nope. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks, Tim. Uh, next issue, um, we have a new Kubernetes cluster to add uh, in the sponsored account, you know, the one that we want to finish before August. The goal of this new cluster is to host the agent, the Kubernetes agent for infra.ci, our infrastructure controller. That will be this agent that we won't have to pay for until August on the CDF account. They will be run on the subscription account. Stefan, can you give us a heads on the status um, on this one? Please? Yes, it's a work in progress. I started to uh, check on what you did for the new uh, Kubernetes cluster for CI that you built on the sponsored area. So I'm, I'm starting from there and um, I I did uh, the reverse way. So I started working on the pull request and now I'm getting back to the issue, uh, trying to uh, put all the steps that I need to do 
and um, I needed to dig a little my hand in the in the dirt to understand exactly what we have to to do. So I'm I, I'm working right now on the issue, and I will go back on the on the pull request. I understood that I will have to do multiple pull requests to create the the objects, the one after the other, like first the cluster, then the the cluster node pools. And then the um, the Azure credential the oh forgot its name the administrator one that will be used by Kubernetes management to uh, handle everything and the network yes yeah and of course the Jenkins setup cool. and this one I I'm not sure how I will handle that with the URL and stuff but we'll see okay. Uh, I haven't checked the amount of money that it could help us, uh, but we will see quite quickly. I don't think it's worth the effort. We have credits here, clearly, so let's use them for two or three months. You said that I don't think it's worth the effort? No, no, no. I'm... I don't oh. know. I don't oh, know the sorry. amount of money that we're paying oh. for infra CI agents. So let's see. We will see uh, once done. Even a few bucks would be good. Saved. Absolutely. Any questions? No. Okay, um, Hervé, so you mentioned you were still interested to help us around the 2 FA uh, enablement for the Jenkins NPM account. Uh, can you give us a quick heads up on this one or should I do it if your internet is in bad shape? One to three okay. So I'm going to speak on behalf of Hervé, we synced earlier today. So password is currently on one password, on the Jenkins Infra one password. Um, Hervé is interested and curious about um, um, want to set up the 2FA using our OAT method, because you only use it OAT, OAT tool, OAT tool. I don't remember. I think you're missing a, a U, no? It's Oath. Yeah. Oh, no, it's O-A-T. Oh. Yep. oh, sorry. Oh, you make me doubt. Let me check. I thought that was authorization, so no. O-A-T-H tool. Oh, yeah. You sorry. No problem. Um, and Stefan and I um, will test the new 2FA once done. So as a reminder, we have a readme around how do we use OAT tool to enable uh, 2FA. We have a shared secret, you know, the QR code that usually you had to Google Authenticator, except in that case, that's a, that's a secret or a certificate. And that one is encrypted with our GPG keys inside the private repository that we use with SOPS the command line subs, where we have all of our encrypted secrets. And so we have successfully used it for the new AWS account for Digital Ocean, at least. Uh, we can, when we need to authenticate, first, we retrieve the password from uh, one password, we authenticate. And when the 2FA code of six numbers is expected, the OAT tool is a command line. And combined with GPG, you will be asked to decrypt the shared secret with your GPG key, then it will generate like your phone, a six number code that you can use that allows us to share the 2FA. As a reminder, that method was been pointed to us one year ago by uh, Oleg Nenashev and uh, Vadek Folonier. And that also is the recommended method on GitHub by GitHub themselves on their documentation if you want to share an account with 2FA and authentic, uh, enabled. Any questions? Okay, so thanks, Hervé, for taking care uh, of this. Uh, so let's wait for next week, but that one should be quick and easy. Um, Mark, may I ask you to give us a summary on the dot word that ask? Uh, so adding the PGP signature uh, on the mm -hmm. binaries. Yeah. So. Basel correctly noted that it is stalled because I've not made any progress in a month. Okay. Um, and uh, I think I'm unlikely to make progress this week because of other work on spring security. So mm -hmm. 
Uh, we could drop it from the work in progress if that makes it clearer. Okay. Let's move it. Let's delay of two milestones. Great. Yeah. Too much work in progress. All mark. Okay. Thanks for the status. Mm. Stefan, can I ask you a status around storage migration for weekly CI and other controllers? Um, so I, I did improve the, the creation from Terraform uh, between the PV, PVC, and, and disk. I added um, the, the rights to use it. Um, and uh, Sorry, and now I um I I have to work on the um, pod that will mount both um, PV PVC. Um, in fact, I had to go back because when I tried, uh, it didn't have the rights to uh, to mount the volume, so um, I had it to add the permission. It's it's yeah, disk access to to mount it. To access the object on the API. Yes. Once you have access, mounting is a detail. Okay. And then, uh, so migration earthing pod is in progress. Mm -hmm. That's all you detected. So the goal for, if I understand correctly, is you are using a pod that will mount the old volume, Both. the existing one, the new one, and we will try just earthing just to have an idea of. Uh, is it working first? That's mm -hmm. a good first step. <laughs> smoke test. If it's That's smoke, exactly it's what happened. It exactly. was not working. <laughs> and it's uh, until the real life mounting and having an order of magnitude of the time required with an initial copy from scratch. And then we know that we can plan the operation on worst case with a full copy. Yes. In terms of uh, time window. And then, so to do, plan operation once the uh, uh, once all is working as expected. Exactly. Does it summarize it? Yes. Cool. So if we're lucky this week or otherwise uh, later. As a reminder, the goal for us is to use a, a less powerful disk because we don't need a premium SSD. We only need a standard SSD. Yeah, I... so and we will yep. use that same method for the Jenkins and and Jenkins release. So that's why I'm taking my time to make sure that everything is working and is flawless and is easy to, to port to the other ones. Good reminder, I forgot about mentioning. It's in the one. title. Yeah, but that involves reading. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just a word about our two friends uh, who want to help us by providing mirrors in Romania, which is in East Europe. Um, the first one, I think it's RCS. Yes. So RCS, we just received an email a few minutes, uh, one hour ago. So plan for summer. So they had issues. Um, let me check, but. Yeah, so uh, RCS, uh, they just say plan for summer 2024. So let's move this issue out of the milestones and we will wait for them. Is that okay for everyone? I will uh, add a comment explaining from the email. Uh, for the other mirror by Ostico, so they ask for our outbound IP, so they can uh, add an allow list on their Earthing server, um, gave them. So now we are waiting for them, waiting for their filtered Earthing server. And as soon as they gave us this credential, we can add that at this new mirror and benefit. As a reminder, uh, Hervé worked uh, early with them. So they have um, a web server that you can already use to download plugins. It's just it's not reference on our mirror system. That's why we need the Earthsync scanning part. And they are they are doing a sync every three hours, I think. So, yep. 
Is there any question about the mirrors? Nope. Uh, two last item on the current milestone. First one, uh, building our own Git version for Linux on the Packer images. So Stefan, you you did some tasks on this one, but I asked nope. you to put it on stale exactly. because we have uh, the other task you worked on. Yes, yes, I had to stop. I'm, I'm the step I am in. I just did a comment because I, for, I forgot to comment. But the step I am in is to check that the the both installation from uh, the the initial installation and the one that we are using for the uh, compilation are not confronting themselves. And and the first test that I did were not on the VM but on the Docker and the Docker doesn't have the problem. So I need to make sure that I check on on VM and to check if I can do some cleanup or, or make sure that the default are very specific and there is no misunderstanding on the system. But uh, but yes, I don't have time for now. Okay, so I will move this one on the backlog and not on a milestone for now. Sorry. At least no, no problem. It's just we have way more things to do. That's important, but not important enough for now. The we work you did is always useful. Yep. Um, Artifactory, I had discussion with numerous people, uh, staled. I don't think I will have enough time, so I will uh, move this one out also. Okay for everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's have a quick look on the new issues and do the triage. Should they go on the current milestone? Should we start working on these issues or something else? Okay, I'm moving to the issues part. So first, I'm taking them from top to bottom. Uh, first one is uh, fr the one from Tim. We mentioned it earlier. So that's an issue to track the work on using managed identity for trusted CI. So I propose that we remove the triage and we let this one slip on the backlog uh, because yeah, right now we don't have the time and I think it will be worth doing it after the update center thing. Any objection, things to add or someone want to work on it instead? No, I agree. Okay, let's roll. So I'm just adding message and I will add the link later. Legit, but backlog. Okay. So I've added uh, related to, I had to, ex to send to Ostico the um, outbound IPs that we are using we are for scanning their repository. I believe we could update our current API uh, that Stefan and Hervé built. So we could add this inside. So it should be automatically uh, retrievable and configurable by our uh, mirrors. Uh, so I've added that issue and I believe I should be able to add it quickly. Uh, that could be interesting. So if no one object, I will add it to the upcoming milestone. Uh, by adding it quickly, I mean without breaking the current API schema, uh, because we have a version, we are using a version two. We could manage breaking change, but then there is a lot of things. Oh, which URL do we provide? How do we update the former version? How do we let user know that a given version will be outdated? We don't have an API negotiation for headers. So it's still an early stage and we might need or might not need to. So that's why I want to say, hey, let's use the same schema as much as possible without breaking change. That would be easier for now. Any objection? Nope, okay, so I'm removing try H. I see myself. Of course, if anyone is interested to help, no problem. Um, what other kind of issue do we have? Uh, expiration of the digital ocean P80s. 
Uh, Stefan, do you want to work on it after Trusted or should I do or can we do it in team? Uh, I don't know if I can do it. Yes, now I can because of OOS and everything. I can try to handle that if you want. Is that okay for you? Uh, let's say we yeah. target Thursday. That if one I, is easy. If I, remember, uh, if I remember correctly, we were not able to do that before because we didn't have the, the right to get them. But now we have. So that would be a first for me. Um, I will try, and if I'm stuck, I will call you back. Okay. And I propose we we target uh, Thursday, Thursday, so you Thursday. will have plenty of time to finish the other task. Is that okay? Yes. Thursday morning. Cool. Thanks. And worst case, if you are not able, I will finish it Friday. It has to be done before Monday. No, no, you will finish it on Thursday afternoon, please. Oh, man, you're, you're taking too much time. No, uh, the time, it's the 10th of June, so it's good. Monday. Next Monday. Monday. We got the full weekend. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know you don't want to deploy on production on Friday, but on weekend, it's way worse, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I've opened an issue about Streamline Maven version across the infrastructure. Uh, so uh, that issue located the Maven version that are outdated on the infrastructure. The goal is to either document why using an old version or propose something. Um, I'm going to start working on this one because the third one is directly related to the Jenkins core releases. So I need to start the discussion with the developers. We expect to have the same kind of issues soon about the GDK version we use to build Jenkins, of course, but that's a separate topic. For the others, I believe these are leftovers uh, that can be documented. Is there any question, objection, or someone who wants to take that topic? Nope, okay. And finally, finally, what other? We don't have other try aged version. So, do you have new topics you want to add? One, two, three, no. Okay. So, we will see everyone, yeah, every, everyone will see each other next week on the same meeting. We will see virtually each other in the upcoming days. So for anyone watching us on YouTube, see you next week. I'm going to stop recording. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.